I'm Charlotte with Fraser Meals 101. I have so much fun in store for us today, so I'm really glad you're here. Today what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be taking this rotisserie chicken that's shredded. So I've got two bowls here full of this, and we're gonna be transforming that into freezer meals. I have a ton of variety planned, and I think it's really gonna help you to see what you can do and how versatile this idea is, and also how you can save a lot of money by using this plan. So um, before we get started, uh, there is another video that explains how to take those rotisserie chickens and break them down and then shred them. I'm not um, an expert at that by any means, so I actually asked my neighbor Christy to come over and teach me how. And so we did that on video so that you could learn as well. So if you're like me and you're newer to breaking down a chicken and um, how to shred a rotisserie chicken or a cooked whole chicken, then you'll want to pause this video and go over and check that video out first and then come back and see all the things that you can do with your now shredded rotisserie chicken. So I will go ahead and put the link right there to that video demonstrating how to get your chicken ready. And if you are old hat at getting chicken shredded, then go ahead and just keep watching this video and I will show you what to do with all of that chicken. We broke down six rotisserie chickens, so I'm not sure how much chicken we ended up with, but I have enough ideas to keep us going till we reach the end of this chicken. Uh, probably I could have done another six and still had ideas to keep us going. So the first thing we're going to make is a chicken tostada mixture. And um, when this is done, you can take out the freezer bags, heat them up in the skillet, just warm that mixture up, and then you can serve it on tostadas with some shredded lettuce, some cheese, some cilantro if you want, kind of whatever, like some people like tomato or avocado, whatever it is that you like on your tostadas, you can add that, but this is gonna be your general main mixture. So super simple, we're just gonna do five cups of shredded chicken, and then we're going to be adding some mango salsa. This is a mango peach. You could do just peach, you could do just mango. This mango peach, it's what they had, and uh, I think it'll be good. And then we like spice, so I'm also adding quite a lot of jalapeno. I've got two jalapenos that are diced really fine. Um, and I kept my seeds and membrane in there. If you don't like spice, then you'll wanna maybe cut that down to one jalapeno and you'll wanna take out the seeds and the membrane because that's where all of that spiciness is. So we're gonna add that and then just one eight ounce block of cream cheese and that's it. Super simple, just a four ingredient recipe. And then once you get those bags in the freezer, you'll have them to be able to pull out and make a really fresh tasting chicken tostadas meal for your family. Now, of course, you wanna make sure that that cream cheese is softened to room temperature for a while so that you can stir it in there more easily because mine is softened. This is actually very easy to stir and it's going to be done in no time. I'm gonna go grab my bags. Um, because this has the sweet and the spicy, you've got that really nice flavor contrast. So I'm excited to try this one. I think it's gonna be delicious. I'm back. The timer beeped to let me know that my pasta was done. I'm making pasta for two other recipes. So that is gonna be ready to go right on time because this one is finished. I'm splitting it into these medium-sized freezer bags and I think I'm gonna try to get three bags out of this. You could do two of the larger size bags or even four 
of the medium bags depending on the size of your family you don't need this mixture to be a huge amount because when you assemble your tostadas you're going to be adding like that shredded lettuce and all of your other fixings and so it's already going to be a pretty hearty meal with just a small amount of this so you don't want to just um, take this whole amount and just have it in one bag that would be too much for any size family to eat <laughs> As with anything else with freezer cooking, you want to get out all of the excess air that you can because air is the enemy to freezer meals. It is what causes your freezer burns. So I took out all the extra air that I could, I labeled it, and that one is ready to go in the freezer. This next recipe is new to me but I will put the recipe down below. I'll link it down there. Now I am making two penne recipes. So I cooked the entire large bag of penne because each of the recipes calls for half that amount. And then I just split it in half. So I've got half in this bowl and half still in the pot. I added a little bit of olive oil after I drained it just to make the noodles not clump as much because I wasn't gonna be using it immediately, um, or at least not that second batch. So um, for this recipe, again, the, the recipe will be down below. Um, I am adding, you know, read it off my cheat sheet here, uh, four cups of cooked chicken, some onion flakes, two jars of Alfredo, one and a half cups of regular salsa, one cup ricotta, and taco seasoning. And then we're gonna top it with Parmesan after it's in the casserole dish. Now, whenever you're making a pasta recipe to freeze, you need to be sure to cook the pasta a little bit underdone. So you want your pasta al dente because when you freeze it and then thaw it and take it out and bake it, the pasta is gonna continue cooking a little bit. And so if you cooked your pasta all the way through before you made your freezer meal, then your pasta is gonna get mushy and you're gonna have texture issues. So you can absolutely make pasta dishes and freeze them, but you do have to adapt them a little bit um, with undercooking the pasta. So we're gonna make this, it's gonna be really quick. Here we go. this point you have two options you can either take this mixture and put it into a um, freezer safe casserole dish or an aluminum foil um, baking dish and then um, you want to seal that really well with aluminum foil and um, first you're going to top it with your parmesan and then you put it in your freezer or second option is that you can take this and put it into a freezer bag and then you can take a medium sized freezer bag put your parmesan in there once it's measured out and then you can staple that to the other bag um, you want to staple above the seal so that no air gets into the main bag of course and um, and that way it takes up less room in your freezer and uh, on the day that you want to cook it you can thaw it and then transfer it into whatever casserole dish or baking dish you want to use then top it with the parmesan that's already included and all measured out and stick it in the oven so because um my freezer space is limited because we have a large family and so many freezer meals uh again really good problem to have but because of that i'm going to do option number two i'm going to measure out my parmesan put it in a bag and um, staple that to my main bag and get it in the uh, freezer that way. Okay, so now we have another complete meal done. This one has pretty much everything all ready to go. 
So um, dinner would be really easy on this night. And I'm going to start on the next penne one just because I like to work with recipes that have similar ingredients. I find it's a lot faster to do things that way and it helps keep me on track. For this next penne recipe, it's a buffalo chicken penne. I think it sounds amazing. Actually, this is what we're gonna have for supper tonight. <laughs> so I, this one isn't even gonna make it to my freezer, but it is totally freezer friendly. So um, you can just follow my freezer instructions in order to freeze it. We're gonna eat it tonight because it just sounds like something I wanna try. I was going to make it right here in the pot with the pasta, but looking at my list of what I have planned, I also have a spaghetti chicken, what is it? Chicken taco spaghetti. So another new to me recipe, um, but I wanna use this same pot to cook that pasta in. So I'm going to use my chicken bowl, um, which is now empty because this is the chicken we're gonna be using for this recipe. And that way I have less dishes to do because, you know, I'm all about the least amount of dishes possible. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna add this to our bowl and get started. I'm just going to get this rinsed out and get some more water in there and get the water on the stove because I gotta keep things rolling. When you're doing freezer meals, you wanna make the best use of your time possible. So, be right back. All right, so. We've got our pasta, two cups of that shredded chicken, and then it calls for, where did I put it? There, okay, the cream cheese calls for a third of a cup of Frank's Red Hot, but again, we like it spicy, so I'm going to adapt uh, that. Actually, again, I'll be putting the recipe down below, but I'm not following it exactly. This one, I'm actually not following that closely at all. If it's really amazing, then I'll write up my version of it, um, and then you'll be able to find that version on my website. But uh, for now, just use the one that's linked down below and maybe follow through with my adaptations or follow it exactly as she has it and see if you like it that way. So um, hers calls for chicken broth. I'm gonna skip that because I'm adding more of the um, Frank's sauce, so I'm gonna have more liquid that way and I don't really wanna mess up um, the consistency piece of things. And then we're adding paprika, salt, pepper, and blue cheese dressing. And I think that the blue cheese dressing is really going to make it different and kind of amazing. So I'm looking forward to this one. So I'm realizing that I probably should have mixed everything together before I added it to the pasta because when I'm trying to combine that cream cheese, I don't want to squish my pasta noodles. So the next time I make this, if it's good and I make it again, then um, what I would do is combine everything else and then add the pasta. Um, but. I'm just doing it like on the side of the bowl right now so that I don't squish my noodles. And then when it's really well combined, then I'll stir everything in. So just a tip that I'm learning the hard way for you. <laughs> beautiful buffalo chicken pasta that we are going to get to eat tonight and I can't wait. Okay, so I've got my spaghetti cooking right now and whew, I need another measuring cup. Nope, I'll just use this. Okay, so I've got my spaghetti cooking right now and while that is cooking, what I wanna do is I wanna make some bags of barbecue chicken. And the reason that I want to do that is to have them in the freezer so that I can put them on a homemade pizza because you can make a really nice um, barbecue chicken. And well, you know what? 
there's lots of different kinds of variations on a barbecue chicken pizza. You can do like a barbecue chicken Hawaiian, so do your pineapple, or you can do like the barbecue chicken with some green onions and some spicy peppers and that kind of thing and make it more of a, I guess, spicier version. Or you can do like a Tex-Mex kind of idea so that you've got some of those southwestern flavors on there with your barbecue chicken. So however you do that, um, it's nice to have that in your freezer. But you can also take these bags of barbecue shredded chicken and make a great pulled chicken sandwich with them. So um, you can add uh, dressing onto that. So either a garlic mayo or like a blue cheese type of dressing or a ranch dressing and just stick that on a bun and there you go. Lunch, supper, whatever. Delicious. So super easy. We're just going to put some uh, shredded chicken in the bag and then I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. Use whatever flavor you want. I have a bold and spicy one. Um, and then I have some fresh lime juice here that I'm going to add as well as some smoked paprika. So I think that's all I wanted to add. Let me see. Oh, I was thinking of adding a little bit of brown sugar and maybe some Jamaican jerk seasoning. I think I'm going to be a yes on, a br on the brown sugar and I'm going to skip the jerk seasoning and uh, we should be good. So I'm doing less than a teaspoon of brown sugar, so it's not going to be overly sweet, but just something to add more depth of flavor in there. And um, we're actually going with my brother-in-law and his wife on a little couple's vacation to the mountains for a weekend in a couple weeks. I'm not sure when. <laughs> I don't have my calendar in front of me, but anyway, a week, two, three, something like that from now. And so I'm going to take one of these bags with me then because we're going to be making homemade pizzas and it'll just give something that we can add to some of the pizzas. And then I'm also going to um, cook up some Italian sausage and freeze that. And then I'll be bringing one of those bags so that we can use it on some of the other pizzas and just have a lot of nice variety and um, it'll feel like we've gone out to a restaurant even though we've made them ourselves. And that timer means that the spaghetti is ready, so I'm just gonna drain that. But in the meantime, we got two more bags done here, and um, we're already into our second bowl of shredded chicken, and we'll just keep going till it's gone. So since this is our last pasta meal, I can actually just stir that one right there in the pot. So I'm just gonna get the air out of this, get it sealed and get these put to the side. Although I should label them first so that I don't forget what I was doing. Okay, now the chicken spaghetti thingy. Uh, Chicken taco spaghetti. So, spaghetti, check. Green pepper, yep. Um, ooh, can of Rotel. I'll grab that in a second. Taco seasoning. We've got that already out from another recipe. Ooh, I just about had a big taco seasoning disaster there, but I managed to save it. <laughs> Okay, now I wanted to also let you in on how much time has passed because I know that when I'm doing these videos, I fast forward through a lot of parts. And so I just want to give you a sense for how much time this has taken because we did do some meals that involved cooking pasta and those kind of things. And I have a tendency to talk a lot. So you could probably get this done a little faster than I've done it. But um, it is almost four o'clock. Well, it's like 10 to four. And I started at two o'clock. We've done the chicken tostada filling, 
the two bags of the shredded barbecue chicken, um, the buffalo chicken pasta, the, what was that other pasta called? Um, the Mexican chicken Alfredo pasta. And then we are now working on the um, oh, chicken taco spaghetti thing. We have a lot of kind of taco-ish flavors I'm realizing as I'm reading them, but anyway, that's fine. And then we're going to do a chicken sriracha rice. That sounds really, really, really good. I am so looking forward to that one. I was kind of debating actually if that's the one we should have for supper tonight, but um, because that one can more easily go into a bag, I decided that that one's gonna go into the freezer and we're gonna do the buffalo chicken one for supper. Um, and then, what do we have left? Uh, the sriracha rice, oh, and we're gonna make some bags of just um, chicken because if you have bags of shredded chicken in your freezer and they freeze beautifully, then what you can make with that is you can make chicken pot pie, you can make chicken salad sandwiches, you, well, I mean, whatever chicken recipe in the whole world, really, as long as you can use shredded cooked chicken for it, you can make anything. So it's really nice to have those in your freezer. Now you can do them in like two cup bags or four cup bags. What I like to do is do them in two cup bags because that way, if you need more, you can just pull out more than one bag. Whereas if you do it in a four cup bag and then you're just making like a small amount of chicken salad sandwich to bring, like let's say for work lunches or something like that, then you might end up with some leftover that you don't use and then it goes to waste. And I don't like things to go to waste. So um, I prefer to just do it in the two cup bags and then pull out two if I need some for a recipe that calls for four cups or if you know, it's something that needs to feed more people. So, uh, what do we have next? Okay, Rotel, cream of chicken soup, shredded cheese, onion, and chicken. Okay, so we'll put the chicken in now, and then I'll go grab the cans, the cheese, and the onion, which is not yet diced. So, I'll go and do all of that um, after I add the chicken here. And this one should come together pretty quickly also. So we do about three cups of chicken. Again, I'll put the recipe down below, but I didn't write down how much chicken you're supposed to do. So um, actually I'm gonna do two cups. Just based on what else is in here, I think that two cups will be plenty. Okay, be back. Executive decision, I'm going to skip the onion because I just want to get things done really quickly before one of my daughters gets home from her day camp. If I skip the onion, then uh, I think I can finish everything before she's back home, so. This is this chicken taco spaghetti thingy and um, I'm going to put it in a freezer bag but you could put it into a casserole dish as long as it's freezer safe or of course you could put it in a casserole dish and put it directly in the oven or you can put it in one of those foil ones that go in the freezer so whatever you want to do you can do again I'm just trying to be conscious of the space I have in the freezer. So that's why I'm gonna put it in a bag now and then I can transfer it into a casserole dish on the day that I bake it. I think you guys are gonna love this recipe because it's a little different than what we usually do and it uses leftover rice. So we love things that can use up our leftovers, right? So we're gonna take uh, about two cups of your chicken and I'm assembling this right in the bag because it just makes it easier and again, less dishes. So now we're gonna do four cups of cooked rice. And 
and this is leftover from a dinner that we had the other night. Was it last night or the night before? I can't remember, but anyway, leftover, just white rice, but whatever leftover rice you have is great. I'm hoping that I am gonna have enough of this recipe or enough rice to be able to make two of this recipe, but I'll have to wait and see. So that's three cups. It's looking promising. And four cups. So let's attempt to make another bag and see what happens. We can always do like a half recipe if I don't have enough rice. Now, if my spatial concepts were better, I could probably look at what I have left and know whether it's four cups or not, but I have no idea. So it's gonna be a surprise to me, a surprise to you. So there's one, two, I think it's gonna end up with about three. So yeah, three-ish cups. So I'll just put a little bit less of everything else in this one and it's still gonna make a really nice meal and that way I get rid of every last bit of my leftover rice. Recipes are a lot more forgiving than you think they are, um, at least when it comes to dinner recipes. When it comes to dessert, um, baking is more of a science, so you probably shouldn't mess around with those recipes too much, but where, where dinner is concerned, it really is easy to tweak things and use up what you have left or you know a little more a little less whatever so yeah or substitute something that you have in the kitchen anyway okay we're gonna do a little less than two cups of chicken since it's less rice and in that second bag and then we're doing soy sauce oyster sauce sesame oil and sriracha and you want to also add some sriracha on top at the end when you serve it if again you like things spicy if you don't then avoid that part okay i want to mix this up separately and then add it to my rice i don't usually do that i usually mix things right in but in this case i just feel like we're gonna have a better like I don't want something to just stick to the rice and not be mixed in properly, so that's why I'm making this choice. Okay, I forgot to measure the sriracha, but that looks like about two tablespoons to me. Okay, soy sauce, two tablespoons. And one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of sesame oil. Now, if I would thought this through, I would have doubled this and then added like half to each one, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because I think it would have been so full that it would have been hard to stir. So we'll just do one at a time here. It smells really good. I think this is going to taste. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another word than amazing because I use that word too much. It's going to be delicious. How's that? Uh, now we are gonna add some frozen peas and I'm going to fry up some eggs. I'm gonna fry up three eggs. Actually, I might do five eggs now that I've got the two bags going. And then once those are fried, I'm gonna add those into the bags and we're gonna add some salt and pepper. Um, it does also call for onions, so I guess I should have gone ahead and cut some onion for that last recipe and then I would have some onion for this recipe. But I didn't, and my time is getting, it's like 4.15 now. So um, my daughter will be home at like 4.45, and I'd love to get things cleaned up so that I can just spend time with her when she gets here. And um, so I think I might skip 
the onion again. I like onions, so it's it's a harder decision for me than it should be. But anyway, okay, so we're doing like a cup of frozen peas. Again, I'll put the recipe down below. You know, I decided that um, while the egg is cooking, I probably have time to just quickly cut up an onion. And that way, at least one of the recipes that's supposed to have onion has it. <laughs> Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I usually prep everything. Woo, my eyes. Okay, note to self, do not cut onions on camera. Okay, yeah, if you've watched any of my other videos, then you know that I usually prep all of the ingredients ahead of time, and I have everything laid out, not just for each recipe, but for all the recipes, and if there's any vegetables that need chopping, I have that done completely ahead of time. So this time I didn't do that. And part of the reason is that I wanted you to be able to see that you can do this too. Like, yes, it's awesome if you wanna set aside a day or two and make a month or two or three's worth of meals all at one time. And so you can click there to see our um, video when we made 150 freezer meals. And so yes, you can do that. But if you don't have that kind of time and if that overwhelms you, then you can totally do something like this where you're just using one main protein and still making a lot of variety and you don't have to be super organized. I mean, you do have to have the groceries, but like I said, you can substitute if you don't have something. You can kind of, um, change things as you go if you need to. So this really can be that easy. It is now for almost 4.30 and we're going to be done. Oh, I have to do counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to be done 10 meals and that was like two and a half hours and then we're gonna take and that doesn't count the amount of time that it took me to shred the chicken though but if you had the chicken already shredded then two and a half hours and you could make 10 meals plus we're gonna have enough left over here that we're gonna do some bags of just shredded chicken um i wanted to give you some other ideas oh if you're looking for ideas that reminds me you should click that little subscribe button because we have great ideas all the time. Here are some other ideas of what you could do with your chopped um, chopped chicken so or shredded chicken. You can do chicken spaghetti, white chicken chili. Uh, you can, oh, hold on, my eggs. You can take a jar or two of Alfredo sauce, mix it in with the chicken, and then you can make those large jumbo shells, those pasta shells, and you can stuff those with your chicken Alfredo mixture and some spinach or broccoli and bake that. That's really good. So those are just like some ideas that I have for what you could do with some more um, shredded chicken. Now, if you have liked this video on what to do with rotisserie chicken, then um, I ask you to let me know because I have lots of other ideas <laughs> ruminating around in my brain. This is the kind of stuff that I think about when I can't sleep at night is like uh, I come up with meal ideas. So if you want me to do another video on rotisserie chicken ideas, then I would be totally happy to do that. Or if you have ideas of meals that you can make with rotisserie chicken, like those, you know, if you've got a great chicken pot pie recipe or something like that, then please let me know in the comments and um, then other people can share those meal ideas too. Now, I'm just going ahead and making those two cup bags of shredded chicken that I had talked about. And I think I'm going to end up with probably three bags 
when I am done this video, <laughs> I'm going to look back and I'm going to calculate like, okay, I used four cups for that recipe and three cups for that recipe and two cups for that one and whatever. And then how many bags did I get at the end? And I'm going to calculate that all out and figure out how much shredded chicken I got with those six rotisserie chickens. And that'll give me a better idea of what I would have gotten with one rotisserie chicken. And if I remember, I hope I remember, remind me if I don't, I will put that in the description so that you'll know as well. Again, like the sizes could vary, but it'll kind of give you a general idea. So I'm just going to go and um, stir those eggs and uh, then I'll be back to finish these off. the egg in there I'm just gonna give it a squish and combine all the ingredients now I'm not gonna close them quite yet because you don't ever want to have something that's warm or hot um, and seal it and then freeze it because again that can cause freezer burn because it can create um, air in your bag as things um, change with the heat change so anyway um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna squish them, um, but not seal them quite yet. And then when they're fully cooled or the egg is fully cooled in there, then I will seal them properly, put them in the freezer, and that will be another meal that is ready to go. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to give some of these new recipes a try. And I will let you know in our what's for dinner videos what our family thought of them. Join us again next time on another freezer cooking adventure. Happy cooking!